Claire Elliott was just 16 when her former employer failed to pay her full wages and super entitlements. I thought being given cash in hand, 16 bucks an hour was a pretty good deal as a 16 year old. Uh, in hindsight, it wasn't. It was below what I was owed. Claire now works for a union helping other young people recover their super after it took her six years to realise she had missed out. The ATO reclaimed some money and sent it to me, but it was only one year's worth of super and totaling about $800. Um, I know for a fact that four years of part-time work, I would have earned a hell of a lot more. Data from Industry Super Australia shows about two and a half million employees missed out on $4.3 billion in super in 2019 to 2020. About 4.2 million people are paid super every three months. A 30-year-old earning the median wage could be $8,000 better off at retirement if they were paid super fortnightly instead of quarterly. Most Australians just trust what's on their payslip. Sadly, about one in four Australians are finding out way too late that that money's not making it into their super account. The government wants the tax office to lift its game. It'll set targets in the budget for the ATO to chase down unpaid super from employers. Unpaid super should be treated in the same way as wage theft. If you are deliberately not paying your workers superannuation, you are stealing money from them. The Minister will consult with employers before making other changes like introducing fortnightly payments or tougher penalties for those that don't pay at all. We should be treating the businesses that make an honest mistake differently from the ones who willfully and persistently don't pay their employers the right entitlement. Super funds say targets on their own won't be enough. Giving more money to the ATO to recover money that is already lost. It's kind of like putting an ambulance at the bottom of a cliff. Uh, the government could actually solve this problem by requiring employers to pay super when they pay wages. Consumer groups agree. It really puts people at financial risk if we don't crack down on this non-payment of super issue. An ATO spokeswoman says the agency takes unpaid super seriously and has a review and audit program focusing on the issue. But employer groups argue Australia's industrial relations system is complex and sometimes employers make mistakes and shouldn't be penalised for it. Well, we're certainly open to the discussion around an increase of, of penalties for deliberate underpayments when we want to make sure that the punishment fits the crime. Businesses are open to paying super fortnightly but want more details about how it would work. It seems like a streamlined approach that most businesses would be in principle supportive of. Claire hopes any changes will prevent others losing out like she did. So I'm going to be in a really precarious situation because I missed the first several years where I should have been earning great super and great interest. Cheers. Now it's her time to rebuild her nest egg for the future. Cheers.